Hello and welcome to another video review here at our Optics Trade YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm going to review and talk ab about uh, a digital night vision clip on uh, produced by Pulsar called the Forward F455. This is the third generation of Pulsar digital night vision clip ons. Uh, it was introduced in January 2019 and it's a successor of a uh, forward f155 uh, clip-on as you probably have noticed we already did a video about the differences between the f155 and f455 and then there was a quite a big lag between uh, this video now and that comparison the reason is that uh, this was one of the hottest products in Europe at least in in terms of sport optics and Pulsar were basically not able to produce enough of them to to cater the, the the whole demand on the market because this device was really a game changer and the reason was that we already had a ordering books open for them and the waiting time was a year or even more than that and we were thinking if it's really smart to do any kind of uh, video review or any kind of marketing for it because we already had a problem with supplying them. Well now this changed because they increased their capacities for quite a lot so now I would say these devices are readily available at least in our store and also in other parts of Europe and we said okay let's do a, a review of the hottest product on the market at the moment. It still is the hottest product. So it's the most affordable clip-on on the market and especially when you consider the optical performance of this device it becomes even more uh, staggering what you're able to get for let's say approximately 1250 euros uh, the 155 uh, was also extremely popular but they were not able to produce enough of them because of their supplier of sensors and displays so the main difference when they came uh, to the production of F 455 uh, was that they changed the supplier of the sensor and the display so that they are able to produce these devices in large, larger quantities. Not only that, uh, the new sensor is also and the display, they're both much much better than they were in the 155. More pixels, better sensitivity and well basically a better performance. It is true that in, in general in use uh, it is not so obvious at the first sight that uh, this device features better sensor and better uh, display but when you use it in, in harsh conditions and especially if you turn off the uh, infrared uh, illuminator the infrared emitter then you see the difference then you see how much better the new sensor is uh, other two differences were that the new infrared emitter is different so it's it can be really quickly detached and reattached and has no focus so it lacks the focus in some regards people like the pre the previous uh, infrared illuminator more but all in all this is still a better device than it was uh, uh, f-155 um, the price point is 1250 euros so it's way below all other clip-on devices especially compared to analog clip-on devices and in many features this device comes close to the analog counterparts first of all you're able to use it during the daytime so it doesn't hurt the device if you use it during the daytime which is really good because you're able to check the zero you're able to see how it works and so on something what you're not able to do with an analog device of this type the second thing is this device has all multimedia features you can imagine so it's able to record video it's able to record photos you're able to connect it connect it with your smartphone and use stream vision application you also see on the box stream vision check our separate video about the stream vision application my personal opinion is that this is one of the best applications on smartphones uh, in connection with optics you're able to get uh, you, you're able to control the whole device through the stream vision you're able to take videos take photos and so on so it's a really really powerful app if I go to physical description 
So this device is partially made out of aluminum, partially out of plastic. It is quite robust and from design wise it is um, very similar to other Pulsar devices from, from the recent years. The only exception are the new Axions. The new Axions, I, I would say, they represent the new design from Pulsar, which we will see in the future even more often. Um, so it is fully waterproofed, IPX7 waterproofness. So even when you put the battery on, you can even submerge the device under the water and it will still work. And it works all the way down to minus 25 degrees Celsius and all the way up to 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, it has an AMOLED display here at the back part. So this AMOLED display inside works also at minus 25. It's really, really robust. So 15 centimeters in length, approximately 14 centimeters in width and roughly seven centimeters, eight centimeters in height. So it's not the most compact device, but if you look at some other analog counterparts, they're much bigger still, at least much longer. Uh, it weighs 830 grams, so it's not too heavy. And I would say with all in all, with most of the optics, there will be no problem attaching this device on, on the front part of the optics. This is also an interesting topic. In some European countries, these devices are allowed. And in those countries where clip-on devices are allowed and normal night vision rifle scopes are not allowed or thermal vision rifle scopes are not allowed, these devices are extremely popular, really, really popular. This is the reason why there is such a huge demand for them. Uh, our country, Slovenia, is one of such countries. So uh, this is considered as a normal scope, a normal uh, night vision monocular. And it doesn't really, it's not necessary that you use it on a rifle scope. You are able to use it on rifle scopes in those countries in EU where this is allowed. And then this device transforms your rifle scope, your daytime optics into a night vision optics. And in some parts of Europe, this is allowed and you're allowed to hunt with, with this device in those parts. In other, device, in other parts of Europe, you are not allowed. So check your local legislation regarding this. If I go back to the housing, so the power supply is the normal IPS batteries. Uh, IPS 7 comes with this device and it powers the device for approximately nine hours. Uh, you're able to change this battery in, in a matter of seconds. So this is probably the best system you're able to get in a such device because the batteries are really not, not expensive. I think around 100 euros, somewhere there. And you know, with a majority of other devices uh, in, in terms of thermal optics and night vision optics, when the battery dies, it's really hard. You have to send the whole device back to the service that they change the internal battery. With these batteries, uh, if the battery dies, the device still is normally usable. You just buy another battery because we know that the, the batteries in today's devices like smartphones and cameras and everything else, um, they are the weak part of the whole device. And this is something what people at Pulsar knew, so they decided to design the battery as completely separate um, separate part. And it, it was the smartest choice they were able to, to make. And I'm really shocked that not many other competitors are following this suit because it's a really smart move. Uh, they also offer IPS 14 batteries which then give you almost 20 hours of continuous operation. Really astonishing. Um, if I go further, the device also has a sleep mode. So you power it on with a short press of the button. You just enter the sleep mode where the continuous operation becomes even longer. It has a video recording possibility, like I already mentioned, with stream vision or directly with a press of the button. Uh, you connect uh, to your smartphone via Wi-Fi or to a computer you're able to connect it through a USB micro cable put in here. So you're able to extract the videos from the device to your computer also by a cable, not only wireless. Together with the device you get a, a cover for this part here where the 
illuminator comes on. Here is also a normal weaver rail. We are able to put, uh, to put on some aftermarket illuminators. There are also available illuminators like this. This one is 940 uh, nanometers of wavelength. This is a standard one. You're also able to get 915 and 850. 940 is completely invisible to animals. Normally with 915, it's still invisible, but it's a little bit stronger. You're able to see further. And with 850, it's the, the most powerful one. You're able to see really, really far. But on the other side, the animals will notice you. This is also one of the advantages of the digital night vision. You're able to use the infrared illuminators that are completely invisible. Check our video regarding this matter. And you see this is the cover which goes on, if you wish. Um, I think it's like, like this somehow. Hmm. Or I apologize. I think, well, you can just fill the whole device like this and this part here so that waterproofness is preserved. Uh, you also get a normal USB micro uh, cable, carrying pouch, charger for the battery and a manual. A manual is in a couple of different languages. It gives you all the information you need. It also gives you the information how to zero the device if this is needed. This is only needed if the device would fall from a from big height or if you bump it into something or something like that. When it comes from the factory, the zeroing is not needed. It is already zeroed. So when you put this device on your daytime rifle scope, the point of impact of your bullets will not change. So I, I would say this is a great advantage that you're not able, you don't need to worry about anything else. You just put it on and that's it. Um, if you look at it like this, it is made in Belarus where the poser is coming from. It has three, three years warranty. You also get here the warranty. And the service for them is inside of EU because the Pulsar also has a Lithuanian outlet. So if anything goes wrong in these three years or afterwards, because they still provide service also after these three years, um, servicing is really easy because it's inside of EU. So uh, all the shipping and all the um, procedures uh, associated with warranty cases are really done quickly and easily. Apart from that, I would say the poser is really good at, at this job because there is not a lot of warranty cases on them. And if they are, they're really sold really quickly. So they are one of the champions in, in the industry regarding this aspect. Um, what else? Recoil proofness. So it's recoil proof all the way up to 375 Holland Holland, old 12, 12 gauge uh, shotgun. So no normal hunting caliber could ever be a problem for this device. In this aspect, I would say it's built like a tank. We sold a lot of them. Uh, I also personally test them, those de these devices, 455 on 9.3 by 62. I uh, tested them on uh, 300 Twin Mac and, and similar calibers, always without a problem. So recoil is never a problem for, those de for these devices. So that also speaks about how well they're made. Okay, the sensor inside, it's a CMOS sensor, very similar than those in, in digital cameras, but really, really sensible. So here you can see the biggest difference compared to other uh, digital night vision devices, and especially compared to the F155, uh, the previous forward. Uh, because if you don't use the infrared illuminator, if you just use the ambient light, let's say from the moon, then you're able to see how sensitive this sensor is, how much light it is able to gather almost from nothing. And uh, Poser, had this uh, function, uh, some light, some light, since many years, where they try to improve the image uh, uh, by software when there is no uh, source of uh, illumination, no additional source of illumination. And with this device, the some light really works perfectly. You have to try it. If you buy it, you have to try it. Um, without the illuminator, the illuminator generally has uh, three settings. 
so one to three uh, from the weakest to the strongest um, illumination and if you try it just turn it off you will see how well the sunlight works in this device so the resolution of the sensor is uh, 1280 by 720 so it's quite a big resolution compared to the previous device uh, and it's the latest generation so it is a step forward the display it's even a bigger step forward it's uh, 1764 by 1000 amoled it works down all the way down to minus 25 degrees and because it has a resolution of uh, this high you're able to use higher magnification on your daytime optics without seeing all the pixels in the display this is also a big advantage compared to the previous uh, f145 uh, 55 um, so now you're easily able to use even on eight time magnification and you don't get the pixelated image so a big advantage um, okay we should go to the optical properties itself the lens in this device is 50 millimeters and it has a aperture of one so the whole 50 millimeters are usable for the sensor you're even able to see the sensor inside um, and the field of view is roughly 11 meters per 100 meters this is Roughly the same if, if you would compare it with a daytime rifle scope with a magnification of 4, 3.5 to 4. So it's a quite usable um, field of view. And in the previous generation, there was also a device called F135, which had a smaller lens, uh, but it had a wider field of view. But uh, I think it's much smarter for Poser. They, they produce only one device because, uh, honestly speaking, uh, 11 meters of field of view is enough for majority of hunting range of detection with this standard illuminator is 500 meters what this means in, in reality I would say I would bet that I'm able to to place an accurate shot on 150 meters with this device which is more than enough for majority of people uh, I would also urge all the users not to use it for shots in, in, in the night for more than 100 meters because of the ethical reasons. But the device does provide performance if needed. So like with all things in life, use some caution and some common sense, but you are able to see the details also on 150, uh, 150 meters or more. And you are able to detect the animals even on, on 500 meters, like they say. So uh, I would say a red deer on 500 meters, you will be able to see it, that there is a red deer. Normally, it's going to be hard to judge the actual size, the trophy and so on, but you are able to see it. The close focus is on five meters and the focusing is done here on top of the device. Uh, I would say it's not the best place because this device, when you put it on a scope, it's quite, uh, quite, um, quite far away from the shooter. And to be honest, like with majority of scopes where you have a side focus on the, on the left side, I think the placement of this on the left side would be better. But then normally there will be no room for the battery system, which is really good on this device. Uh, the menus, you can see it here. Four buttons, on off, menu button, left and right. Uh, with, a, with the right button, you see you can also uh, record, you start recording video and you don't get a remote with this device you are able to buy it separately in the previous generations you did got the remote also because you know poser was the first who started to produce digital night vision clip-ons the dfa 75 was first of their devices of this kind then the forward f 155 and now 455 uh, this is the first device which comes without the remote and I, I understand why because it has a stream vision so you are able to remotely control it through your smartphone but still some still prefer the the remote so they are able to buy it separately if you're not using the remote like with all poser devices you have a short press of the button where you get the brightness and uh, contrast and then long press gives you the advanced menu the advanced menu 
it's really really interesting because it's it's in it's in a round circle because normally when you watch into the device through daytime scope your field of view is round it's not like a, like a screen it's not uh, rectangular and the menu is round so that you see all the menu options in the center of the field of view and it's really well made uh, with a with a 10 second press of the menu button you can also enter the zeroing menu if anything happens so that you don't need to send the device back if it falls from let's say four meters on the ground and if you would like to check your zero um, okay the adapters you see the adapter has four pins it's a new system on thermal imaging clip-on systems from Pulsar on the core series there are only two pins this four pins is much much better you can buy the original Pulsar um, uh, adapter which goes on the scope they have three sizes and then they have plastic inserts inside for the for the um, for the different diameters of the objective bell on, on different rifle scopes and there are also some aftermarket um, uh, adapters most known are smart clip and rusan both of them are really really high quality so a lot of people i would say upgrade to to smart clip or rusan because it's uh it's a much better adapter but it's also very expensive it's 200 euros while the original costs around 100 euros i would say i would if you're buying this device do pay a little bit extra for the smart clip adapter or rusan adapter because uh they're really well well made uh, why the main reason is that with the original adapters which have plastic inserts a lot of people said that they lost the plastic inserts because they when they're putting the device on the scope it's usually dark in the middle of the night and it's easy to lose something when you're not able to use your uh, eyes normally because there is no light okay i will make a short summary and try to to talk about all the main points of this device i would say it's a really a game changer in this category at this moment uh, 2020 in uh, april now it's the beginning of april we are in the middle of uh, corona crisis at the moment i hope that you're all safe and healthy um, in this moment there is no similar device at the same price point everything what is similar or has a similar function either digital or analog starts around 1700 1800 euros so it's at least 500 euros cheaper this is the first thing so the price is almost unbeatable now i would say from this moment onwards the pools are also uh, i would say caught the whole market demand so there are no long waiting times for these devices anymore and the quality it's just amazing for this price point so um, with the new sensor with a new display it really really works phenomenal for 1250 euros uh, stream vision and all other capabilities are just a, a bonus to, to general image quality well it's also positive that the infrared illuminator is not visible to, anim uh, to animals and the new sensor has a sensitivity so high that you're even able to use this device without the infrared illuminator this the other very positive point is also the battery system so these batteries are also a game changer in thermal and night in digital night vision because uh, first of all they work really long time so this battery ips7 works 10 hours with this device more than enough for any any user they're affordable and even if you run out of uh, out of power on the battery if you have two of them you're able to change them in one second or let's say five seconds we just do it like this like this and then you change it with a new instantly and this is really a big advantage compared to all other devices which have internal batteries um I would say this device is really hard on all the competitors and we will need to wait for another generation that everybody else will be able to do something similar at such a low price point okay what could have been done better um, the build quality itself is really good all the materials are 
it's well made device. But when you look from the design point of view, and when you look at the latest generation of Pulsar, so the Axion thermal scope with their magnesium housing and everything, I would say, I hope that the next generation of these devices will be very similar to Axion because the Axion is just in another class compared to all the other competitors. But still, you can see here that this design from Pulsar is like two years old. And when you look at the Axions, which are completely new, you see an evolution of design. Um, so I hope that this will be improved. Uh, normally, the size and weight, this is a very compact device. 830 grams is not that heavy. But normally, everybody would wish that this device would be even smaller, even lighter. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a minus at all, but still, we can all hope on this progress. And the last, re I would say, regret or something what could have been done a little bit better, the focusing knob. The position of the fo fo focusing knob would be much better if it would be on the left side and a little bit as far back as possible. Because when you have this on your daytime scope, it's really hard to reach with your hand all the way to this focusing knob. All in all, still, I would say this device for, for its quality and everything, and if you compare it with all other devices on the market, is almost too cheap because you're really getting great image quality for 1,250 euros. Okay, thank you for watching. Check our other videos, especially the video about StreamVision. Check also the video about uh, F100, uh, F155 against F455, and please subscribe.